Hello everybody, it's Kari Schaefer and I am wanting to wish you the happiest of 2018. I don't know about you guys, but I got my plate so full that the energy of this year is so much about getting up and activating that I really wanted to stop for a minute and talk with you about a few things that I'm seeing that I think might help you succeed in this year. So how many people set goals and intentions for the year? Raise your hand. I, um, you know, I stopped doing that for a long time. And I stopped doing it because I would set goals and intentions and then I would fail at my goals and intentions and then I would feel badly, so why bother? Does that sound familiar to anybody? So I wanna to talk to you about something other than goals and intention. And that is what I call your true heart's desire. I learned this from one of my teachers, listening to our true heart's desire. Because when we set a goal and intention that we don't succeed at or that we don't follow through with, it is because that goal or intention isn't in alignment with our true heart's desire. So I'm gonna give you an example of what this looks like. So when I checked in this year to, see, to listen to see what my true heart's desire was, I found something that was a little bit surprising. I found this voice inside that said, I just don't want to be scared anymore. Now, that's, that's what my heart is saying, right? Now, I'm not telling you to set an intention around not being um, in fear anymore, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But if, imagine if my goal was to go out and make more money this year, you know, I'm gonna increase my income by 30%. But in doing that, I had to do things that were scary for me. Do you think I would succeed at that goal if I didn't know that there was a part of my being that was feeling scared? Now, th that voice isn't me, it isn't all of me, it's a piece of my psyche, but it's an important piece to listen to. And it comes from what I call our outdated survival programming. And our outdated survival programming is often what is running our lives on a subconscious level. So for me, this year, I met up against this part of my subconscious that didn't want to be f scared anymore, right? Or didn't want to feel fear anymore. So the first thing I did was I looked at that and I'm like, well, I don't want to focus on a negative. I want, you always want to be focusing on a positive because you get more of what you focus on, right? So I don't want to be like, I don't want to be in fear. I'm just going to notice more fear, feel more fear. Fear is going to be in my life more. So what do I want instead? Well, I want to be in a place of trust. I want my tissue in my body to be able to trust that it's going to be provided for and that it's safe, right? So that's going to be my focus. Now I want to set a goal of, say, making more money. And if I put myself in a situation that feels unsafe, I now am aware that I need to give myself support in and around that choice. It brings consciousness to those things that are holding us back. So let's say that you're true, you, you check in, you sit down, you get quiet, you say, what is my true heart's desire? What do I wanna be like in a year's time? And, you know, when, at the dawning of 2019, what is that, that real true voice? And you hear something like, I wanna be, you know, rocking it in the business world, and I wanna be making lots of money, or I wanna have, you know, amazing health. That's great. But that's the first step because true heart's desires speak more in the emotional realm than they do in the stuff realm. And the reason that you feel like you want those things is because your subconscious imagines they're going to make you feel a certain way. So we need to take the next step and we need to identify what is that thing going to give you on an, a, an experiential feeling level. What do you imagine it will give you? Very often, let's look at this, like somebody wants a new car, okay? That new car is representing something to their psyche. They imagine if they get that new car, it's going to make them feel a certain way. You can get that new car and you may feel that way or you may not, right? Because 
the, the feeling that you're wanting isn't really in the car. The car is just the idea of the feeling that you want. So let's look at it further and say, okay, I want that new car because when I do, it makes me feel successful. Okay, beautiful. So you want to feel successful. Now you can start a conversation that's really interesting. What does success mean? What does success mean? What does it mean to be successful? What do I imagine that being successful will do for me? Right? What do I imagine? How do I imagine it will change my life? Very often we imagine that if we're successful, maybe we'll be accepted right? Or if we're successful, maybe we'll have the financial means to be free. So what we're looking for is more freedom or what we're looking for is more, is feeling more accepted. Now we can actually start to get in relationship with those deeper wants, those true heart desires, regardless of whether that other thing has shown up or not. And I'm going to tell you a secret. You have a much uh, higher chance of getting that red car if you are also meeting that emotional need elsewhere in your life. So how do we start to work with an emotion that we're yearning for but we don't have or a feeling state? You start to work with it by paying attention to it. Look for where it exists in your life. Read about it. Get curious about it. Buy a book that somebody's written on it. Find people in your life that embody that. Get really curious about what it would be like to feel that way. This is how we make true change. We have to reprogram our neurochemistry to focus on that thought rather than, rather than focusing on other thoughts. When we've been focusing on a thought, even in the subconscious realm for a long time, the neuropathways that support the neurochemistry that make our body um, feel that way are, are, are big. They're wide, they're super highways, right? And the other emotions that we don't feel very often and we're not used to feeling, they're like little trickles. So we need to broaden those pathways by hanging out in them. And initially you hang out in them by getting curious about them. You don't have to be feeling happy. You just start getting curious about happiness and people that are happy, right? People that you, you can think of that always seem to have a smile on their face and what's going on and how do they do that and talk to them, you know, interview people, do whatever you can to get to understand the emotion of happiness more, right? Like, you know, they've done research. Did you know that if you smile, even if you're fake smiling, it releases neurochemistry in your brain that are happy neurochemistry. Right? So that's the old fake it till you make it. Now in doing this, what you will do is you will come up against the other feelings. You'll come up against your the anger, the sadness, the fear, whatever it, it is that you've been trying not to feel. And that's okay too. When that comes up, it is a good time for you to give it some attention and some acceptance. We spend a lot of our life trying to get rid of those emotions. You're not going to succeed. You can get to a place where you don't focus on them as much, where they're not prevalent in your life, but they'll always be a part of your life. There'll always be a time when something comes along and will activate that neural pathway, right? So getting to know it, getting comfortable with it, and accepting the fact that there's a part of your psychology that tends to feel that way will go a long way towards helping to balance the relationship with it. You know that that saying, the more you resist, the more it persists, is so true. The more we try to bury those emotions, the more that they come back and they bite us. And as we mature, those emotions we've been suppressing and suppressing tend to come out even stronger. So it's really important that we do two things. We listen to what our true heart's desire is, and then we start to do what we can by focusing on our true heart's desire and learning about our true heart's desire to develop those neural pathways, right? And simultaneously, when we come up and we meet the other feelings that we 
acknowledge them, that we say, hey, I see that part of my psyche. Almost like you're talking to somebody that isn't you, because it isn't you. It's just a piece of your psyche. I see that other part of my psyche. So anyway, again, take those goals and intentions, sit down and drop in and see if you can hear what your true heart's desire is around those. Why did you set those goals? And then see if you're equipped to meet your true heart's desire. And if not, start to get really curious about what you can do to get to know that experience that you're yearning for on a much deeper level. Stay tuned, I'm gonna, my next video we'll do will be about some detoxification tips. I know a lot of you out there are going to wanna do a detox after the holidays and to lighten up, but we wanna do it in a way that's really safe for us. So I'll, uh, I'll send that video out in just a few days. Sending you all lots of love.